Does the US government tax Nobel Prize winners? Who have been the biggest winners and who have been the smallest winners? We don't want to call them the biggest losers, but who haven't who hasn't won as much as maybe everybody else? These are the kind of questions that economists are interested in, and if you're interested in them as well, I've got all these fun economic facts about the Nobel Prize in all categories in this video. So the first thing you should know is that Along with the Nobel Prize, along with that medal, the recipient gets a cash prize as well. This year in 2019, the value of that prize is 9 million Swedish krona. That's equivalent to about 900,000 US dollars, but has not always been at that amount. I went online and on the Nobel Prize website, you can get the full history of the value of the Nobel Prize. And the nice thing is they've already adjusted it for inflation, so we can directly compare these numbers across the entire history of the Nobel Prize. And what you can see is some pretty big variations. You see that it started off kind of right in that middle range, and then it declines and has a sharp decline, goes up, declines again, stays flat for a while, and then you see this big acceleration up and a decline. Why is it varying so much? Well, the value of the prize depends on how much money the Nobel Prize Foundation has in their uh, endowment, essentially. And so the return on that endowment is going to determine the prize. And so the value of the prize varies with economic conditions. And we can easily see that. That first steep decline, that's World War I. That recovery is once we get out of the war and we're getting into the roaring 20s. We hit the peak of the roaring 20s and then we have the Great Depression, followed by World War II, right? We have this long decline and we just have this long, stable period where they weren't really increasing the real value of the prize until you hit in the 80s and you see this massive ramp up. And I think what they realized here was one, the endowment had grown and the return on uh, investments had gone so high up that they could actually afford to increase the value of the price. And so they wanted to get it back towards that value that they had at the very beginning. And they ramped it up really quickly. And then we see that it falls. And in fact, back in 2011, I believe is this year, they had to reduce the price because they were worried that with the after the recession, they didn't have enough of a return on the endowment for them to support that higher value prize. So the value of that prize is really tied to the economy and how the global economy is evolving. So with all that variation that we see over history, there's clearly gonna be some big winners and some not as big winners. Now, the value of your personal prize, how much of that money you get depends on how many people win the prize with you. If you you are the only winner you get all of that money but if you have multiple winners you have to split it so it's a value of a prize for that prize it's not by individual and so that means if I win a prize with two other people I have to split that three ways so the biggest winner was in 2001 where we see that really big peak and I'm gonna be honest I cannot pronounce this name so I'm just going to put the name right here he received the Nobel Prize in literature the reason why he is the biggest winner is because not only was this the year where the Nobel Prize was at its largest value but he's also the only person that year that was a sole winner of a Nobel Prize every other Nobel Prize awarded that year was shared among multiple laureates who is the not as big winner that happened in 1945 in medicine. The names for them are Sir Alexander Fleming, Ernst Boris Chain, and Sir Howard Walter Florey. The reason why they did not win as much as other people is that they were in 1945, which is one of the lowest years we had throughout the whole thing. And they were the only prize that year that was split among multiple people. And they had to split it among three people that year. So of course that's gonna bring down the average value for all of their prize. Which brings me to the tax. Like does the US government tax the Nobel Prize. The reason why I had this question is because I know like every time we have the Olympics, there's this big controversy about how the Olympians and their prize money is taxed when they come back. And people are saying like, you know, they are representing America. We should let them come home and not be taxed. And I was wondering, what about the Nobel Prize? Are we having that same issue? And it turns out they are taxed. If you go to the IRS website, you can see the whole explanation here. They're saying as long as you are keeping that money, if you are holding on to it, that money is going to be taxed. You can avoid the taxes 
by donating that money to some organization. But if you're going to hold on to that money, you're going to be taxed. I'm doing a video on the prize and economics and you can find that right there. In the meantime, you can check out some of my videos that I've done recently right here. Market power is all about building a community about people interested in and excited about economics. So if that's you, be sure to subscribe here and we'll see you next time.